Caddis Maximus here, this time with another promotional product. You know, as long as Beaver's willing to send me free stuff uh, that I can use, you know, I'll take it. I wanted a kind of a more beater back, uh, vacuum, uh, backup vacuum pump to my Robin Air. So they sent this VP280, even though it's a rebrand of what is commonly an RS series, and that's what the manual is. The manual is, there we go, is all RS series. Here it's all RS series. I don't know what's going on with these black bars. I think it's my stupid lights. I gotta get some better lights. It's really hard to find good lights that work with the camera. Anyway, so none of the models in the book re reference the VP280. You kind of gotta figure it out. Anyway, for a cheap $220 vacuum pump shipped, you gotta spend another 20 bucks on oil. Pretty much all pumps that use oil, air compressors, uh, most of those products are gonna ship without oil. I just wanted to mention that there are some negative reviews of people burning these up in 20 minutes and had pictures of them without oil and I was like what kind of idiot buys a pump that has a big old sight glass to see if there's oil in it and then just runs it until it burns up I mean you almost deserve that to tell you the truth you got to be have more than three brain cells anyway overall it's a decent value for what the pump is I'll once again compare to the Robin Air Kind of hard to see now because I'm tilting it. I don't know if I can get this in a correct position here. You can almost see the oil when it's level. Anyway, when the pump's level, you fill it out with about a half a quart of oil until it's in the middle of the sight glass. I will give them criticism because this sight glass, they didn't include the silk screen on it. Where on the photos online, it does have a silk screen, so that was pretty lame. And the manual just says, make sure to check the oil level. It doesn't actually tell you how far to fill it, like middle of the sight glass. Almost all vacuum pumps you'll fill in the middle of the sight glass. Although there's a couple of exceptions. You just want to look it up. But pretty much like Robin Air's, these cheap Chinese ones, you fill in the middle of the sight glass. Anyway, for what you're getting, two stage, which is a high vacuum, 25 micron, uh, for the price... I mean, it weighs like 35 pounds. Uh, overall, it's worth it. Anyway, here, I'll compare it to the Robin Air. So here we are comparing the Beaver to the ubiquitous Robin Air 15600. This Robin Air, they've been making for, seems like forever. I think at least like 30 years or something. Uh, so the Beaver is cheap. It's actually pretty nicely made for what it is. Especially for a 12 CFM, 1 horsepower, 37 pound vacuum pump. But there is a difference between it when you just need a lot of vacuum and when you do want something just a bit higher end, more professional. The Beaver, even without their registration discount, 220 bucks ship plus another 20 bucks of the oil is half the price for this Robin Air. And this Robin Air is only a 6 CFM. This Robin Air is $500 new but you do get a lot of features you get an integrated cutoff valve or shutoff valve so you can turn on and off the vacuum while it's running without having to uh, actually physically turn the unit on and off these pumps can have a hard time starting up if they're under the vac currently under vacuum or you're working with them you turn them off sometimes you have to disconnect just to be able to get the pump to start back up then you can reconnect it while it's running robin air has a nice switch that does that Robin Air also has what's known as a gas ballast. You can get some issues with condensation inside the pump, and so the Robin Air has a gas ballast, which is like an air bypass that allows moist air to circulate through the pump to reduce chances of condensation. This Beaver has no such feature either. Of course, Robin Air is only a half horsepower, but it uses uh, a pretty high quality motor, to tell you the truth. The Beaver is not a bad motor, it's fan, so fan-cooled, but unfortunately it does use an extruded aluminum body, where this motor is a steel body, and just some other things like that. So that's, you know, some of the big differences between a $500 6 CFM vacuum pump and a, you know, a $220 12 CFM 1 horsepower vacuum pump. But we can see really where it gets, if we line up, this whole center section is for the ballast and for the, the cutoff. But if we actually line up the pump housings, we can see uh, where that all the extra CFM. This does have a huge motor housing, or a pump housing, I should say.
And the one other thing I thought was an oddity is the Robin Air, we have like a quarter inch fitting and then we have a half inch fitting on top. And this hat, I mean, this is a huge fitting. And this is only a 6 CFM pump. Where on the Viver here, surprisingly enough, what we have is we have two fittings as well. But we have like a quarter inch fitting. And another different style uh, fitting. I don't know what the type of fitting this is, but it's also uh, like a quarter inch. Maybe this is supposed to be a 3 8 but the fittings are surprisingly uh, a lot smaller. Even though the port where they're screwed to could accept wider, larger fittings, it just seems like an odd design choice. There is a port so you could pull this fitting off. You could, of course, pull fittings off and put whatever fittings you want. But I think these ports here are actually limiting the potential uh, airflow, the vacuum flow of this pump because they just made a kind of a poor choice in fittings where once again on the Robin Air they use a small and a very large with a very large uh, you know overall T fitting there which I think was a wiser choice and ensures they can on the larger fitting and get the full CFM where on this uh, I think they're actually restricting it some it's not a mechanical issue but it could affect it's it does affect uh, its CFM rates just seems like an oddball choice also, the ratings. This one's rated by, they have it uh, 3 times 10 to the negative first pascals, which is about 25 microns. Where Robin Air advertises this as getting down to 15 microns. I mean, vacuum levels at 15 to 25 microns are extremely low. They're so low that uh, it's about the limit of what these types of vacuum come, uh, you know, the physics behind these types of vacuum pumps. You're getting to the point where the molecules are getting so far apart that the veins can't even pull anything out. To get higher vacuums than what these achieve, you need something known as a turbo molecular pump, which is a scientific grade vacuum pump. And it's nothing like anybody who would be watching this video and looking at these types of vacuum pumps would care about. These vacuum pumps are used in scientific applications just to quickly pull down the initial vacuum before they initiate actual scientific grade high vacuum pumps. These are just uh, used in scientific workloads just to do the bulk clear out. Otherwise, somebody watching this video, as far as like an HVAC pump, you know, air, you know, air conditioning evacuation pump, you know, heavy duty brake bleeding, that type of thing, you know, that's what this Viva would be good for, especially just being, you know, high power and really pretty cheap compared to what would be considered a more professional grade Robin Air. Anyway, so that's my comparison to the Robin Air. I mean, the Robin Air costs twice as much for half the flow, but it's just, it's like a, you know, a real heavy duty industrial product with a higher quality motor, etc. But you're getting what you pay for. And once again, you're getting just the basics. You're getting a one horse motor, with a decent two-stage rotary vein uh, pump. You're not getting a gas ballast valve. You're not getting a easy to use isolation valve. And you're getting a fitting that's really, as I just had mentioned, uh, you get these fittings that are, are really small and, are, and quite frankly may be restricting uh, this pump's potential because it just does not seem like it's really able to hit the 12 CFM with these really small, like quarter inch fittings. I don't know why they would ship like that. But as I said, you can just pull this off, put on your own fittings. I know people are going to ask. I use premium. I actually, you know, O'Reilly's Auto Parts actually sells vacuum oil. And so I just use Robin Air oil. You can't just use motor oil because um, the very low pressure vacuum pumps can cause m a lot of other oils to actually off gas and vaporize because of the low vacuum and they'll just end up blowing out and sucking through uh, all of their own oil. You really do, when it comes to that, many times you can get away with uh, <laughs> not using the right oil, but when it comes to vacuum pumps, you want to get something that is rated for vacuum pumps. And surprisingly enough, the Robin Air oil is American made, which would make sense. We have a lot of petroleum plants. And uh, surprisingly enough, I guess Bosch is associated or owns Robin Air. Anyway, 
that's what I'll mention. That and the one feature I do like, instead of having a permanently attached power cord, it uses a computer power cord known as an IEC cord, which just makes it a lot easier to deal sense. with. And uh, as far as how it runs, it's actually pretty darn quiet, to tell you the truth. Of course, if you forget that you have the exhaust cap in there, it'll just pop it off for you. <laughs> Automatically ejecting cap. Otherwise, it's really not that loud. And once you actually have it closed off and drawing a vacuum, vacuum pumps actually get a lot quieter. A lot of the air noise you're hearing is just the suction of the air. It's always advisable when you're using vacuum pumps to get kind of some kind of stone, like fish tank filter, some kind of inline filter, um, just to prevent particles from running through the pump. Otherwise, that's all these are. They are just a vacuum pump. So, ain't not a lot, not a lot else to say. Do appreciate it. I guess one of the biggest negatives. I mean, they just have a Viver sticker stuck onto it. Uh, they're using blue. The modern Robin Airs are blue. The same model as I did a comparison. They just changed them from red to blue. And the fact that this label is screen, it's metal, but it's all screen printed, so it's not going to hold up really any better. And the fact that this darn label is just a double-sided tape to the side of the motor. No little screws. Uh, so that will eventually get beat up and fall off. But besides actually like evacuating uh, air conditioning systems, you have to use a vacuum pump to get out every last bit of moisture. When you reduce the atmospheric pressure, water will evaporate at much lower temperatures. So it actually draws out all the water. They also can be used in brake systems. You get special little uh, vacuum uh, bo separator bottles. And instead of having so many pump brakes and dealing with ABS systems, it's just amazing when you hook a vacuum pump up to the brake line at the caliper. It just sucks the oil right through. <laughs> and because it's creating a vacuum, it wants to draw the, any of the air bubbles right to where the vacuum pump is. But they're, you know, they're used in certain types of food processing. If you're going to use containers to say maybe you're doing like uh, art projects and stuff involving you know putting epoxy in the wood, then you'll use these vacuum vessels chambers where you put the object in the chamber, put the epoxy in, and then that will help off gas and get rid of any bubbles so you have like a really consistent epoxy. If you're doing any kind of fiberglass or especially carbon fiber layup, those things uh, come out much better if you put them in these special plastic bags, like a vacuum pump to suck them all together. Um, things in manufacturing, CNC machines have vacuum chucks. Uh, CNC routers, more commercial versions, have the tables, have big vacuum pumps on them. So, so like a 12 CFM can potentially be used for, has a variety of uses. Anyway, and you know, if you don't want to break the bank spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on one where you might risk getting some contaminants in it or you're just not going to use it very often, you don't need to spend $500 on a Robin Air or thousands on some other kind of commercial unit, then this for a one horsepower vacuum pump for 220 bucks, and once again 170 if you register a free shipping is, you know, even if it doesn't have the extra features like the Robin Air isolation valves, ballast valves, that type of stuff. Still, nonetheless, you're really not out very much money for a pump that will certainly, uh, as long as you keep oil in it and check the sight glass every once in a while and actually use vacuum pump oil, um, will not take very long to pay itself off. And besides the other issues, at least I can say, I don't know if there's O-rings, but I've had this filled up with oil for a few days and run it a bit. And it's not leaking any oil around the seam, so that's also a big, or the sight glass, which is also a big positive. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed, please do. See you next time.